Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at an introduction to cells, eukaryotes and prokaryotes, the structure of an animal cell, the structure of a plant cell, the structure of a bacterial cell and finally a summary. Cells are really important. This is because cells are the building blocks of organisms. They make up all living things. For example, you're made out of tens of trillions of cells. The trees around you are made up of cells and cells make up all living organisms from humans to bacteria. Cells can either be prokaryotic or eukaryotic. This is an example of a eukaryotic cell. And this is an example of a prokaryotic cell. But what do I mean by eukaryotic? Well, animal and plant cells are eukaryotic. They're complex and relatively large. So the cells in us are eukaryotic. And the cells are bigger than prokaryotic cells, as they're between 10 and 100 micrometers in size. Additionally, eukaryotic cells have genetic material contained in the nucleus. So this is a nucleus of the cell, and it contains the genetic material of the cell. But I'll talk more about the nucleus a bit later on. Bacterial cells are prokaryotic. They're simple and smaller than eukaryotic cells at 1 to 10 micrometers in size. So these bacteria are only made up of one cell. These cells are prokaryotic and relatively smaller than eukaryotic cells. So what are prokaryotic cells like? Well, prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus. They have genetic material that floats in the cytoplasm. So this is the genetic material in prokaryotic cells. I'll talk more about this a bit later on. The key thing is that eukaryotic and prokaryotic both have subcellular structures. These are structures inside the cell that help it function. In this video, I'll be talking about the different subcellular structures found in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. So first, let's talk about the structure of an animal cell. So animal cells have five main subcellular structures. They have the nucleus, mitochondria, which are known as the powerhouse of the cell, ribosomes, which are the site of protein synthesis, the cytoplasm, and the cell membrane, which holds the cell together and control what goes in and what goes out. So let's talk about these different structures. So as I said before, the nucleus contains the cell's genetic material. So this is the nucleus. Its function is really important as the genetic material found in the nucleus controls the cell's activities. The genetic material is actually arranged as chromosomes, and this determines the cell's appearance and function. So this is the genetic material, in this case, DNA. The genetic material is arranged as these structures here, called chromosomes. We talk more about chromosomes in another video. The genetic material inside the nucleus also carries instructions on making new cells or organisms. So you can see a cell is dividing here and the genetic material carries instructions on making these new cells. This genetic material can also be passed on to the offspring. So now let's talk about the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is a gel-like substance in the cell. So this is the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is actually quite an important part of the cell. This is because the cytoplasm is the site of most chemical reactions, which are controlled by proteins called enzymes. These reactions are essential to survive. So this is an enzyme, and this is a substrate, which reacts with an enzyme. Enzymes make reactions a lot quicker in the body. We talk more about enzymes in another video. Enzymes increase the speed of a reaction. For example, enzymes are used in respiration, which transfers energy to the cell so the cell can carry out its activities. We talk more about enzymes in another video. Now let's talk about the cell membrane. The cell membrane surrounds the cytoplasm. So this line here shows the cell membrane. This is a zoomed up view of what the cell membrane actually looks like. But don't worry, for exams you don't need to know the exact structure of the cell membrane. But you do need to know its function. So its function is that it holds the cell together and is a selective barrier that controls the movement of substances in and out of the cell. So the cell membrane controls what goes into the cell and also what leaves the cell. 
cell membranes also have receptor molecules. This is a receptor molecule on the cell surface. It can bind to chemicals such as hormones. So plant cells are actually fairly similar to animal cells. They have all the components of an animal cell. For example, they both have a nucleus. And this is where the genetic information is stored. They also both have ribosomes. Again, this is where protein synthesis happens. Plant cells also have mitochondria. Like in animal cells, this is a site of aerobic respiration, which transfers energy to the cell. Both animal and plant cells also have a cell membrane. This controls the entry and exit of substances in and out of the cell. They also both have cytoplasm. This is a site of most chemical reactions in the cell. However, plants also have three more subcellular structures. They have a cell wall, they have a vacuole, and they also have chloroplasts. But why do they have these additional subcellular structures? Well, they have them because unlike animals, plants have to make their own food and stay in the same place. For example, a lion can just hunt for its food, whereas a plant has to make its own food using photosynthesis. And these structures help in photosynthesis. We discuss photosynthesis more in another video. So first let's talk about the cell wall. Well, the cell wall surrounds the cell. So this is a cell wall. It's on the outside of the cell membrane. The cell wall is rigid and it's made out of a fiber called cellulose. Its function is to support and strengthen the cell. For example, it makes sure that the plant cells don't burst when they take in water. Plant cells also have a vacuole. This is large and contains cell sap, which is a solution of sugar and salt. So this is a vacuole, which contains cell sap. The function of a vacuole is to support the cell by maintaining internal pressure to keep the cell rigid. For example, the vacuole pushes out onto the cell wall and this keeps the cell the right shape and rigid. This also helps to support the plant and keep it from wilting. Plants also have chloroplasts. This is a site of photosynthesis. It's what makes the food for plants. So these are the chloroplasts. And this is a close-up view of what a chloroplast looks like. Chloroplasts are only on the green parts of the plant, so the stem and the leaves. They contain green chlorophyll to absorb and transfer light from the sun to the cell for photosynthesis. So these are the pigments called chlorophyll. And they absorb the light from the sun. This is necessary for photosynthesis. So now let's talk about bacterial cells. Bacterial cells actually have a different structure to animal and plant cells. This is because unlike animal and plant cells, bacteria are prokaryotes. So they don't have a nucleus, but they have circular strands of DNA in the cytoplasm. They also have plasmids, a cytoplasm. They also have ribosomes, though these ones are a bit different to the ones found in animal and plant cells. They also have a cell membrane and a cell wall though the cell wall is made up of something different to what's found in plant cells. They also have some additional structures, but I'll talk about them a bit later on. So bacteria are made of just one cell. They're called unicellular. Plants and animals are multicellular organisms. This means they're made up of lots of different cells. Bacteria are also very small. So to see single bacteria, we use microscopes. Whereas obviously we don't need to see plants and animals through microscopes. We can also see bacteria on agar plates where millions of bacteria form a colony. So a colony is formed here and these are the yellow dots. These are made up of millions of bacteria. So as I said before, like plant cells, bacteria have a cytoplasm, cell membrane, cell wall and ribosomes. But they don't have a true nucleus. This is because the circular DNA strand containing the genetic material floats in the cytoplasm. So this is a circular DNA strand. And these strands are called bacterial chromosomes. They also have plasmids. And these are what plasmids look like. Plasmids are small loops of DNA, not part of the main chromosome. They store extra genes. Plasmids can be passed on between bacteria. The genes on plasmids may help bacteria to survive difficult conditions. 
For example, if bacteria are exposed to antibiotics, which normally kill bacteria, if the plasmin or the bacteria has something that allows it to be resistant to the antibiotic and not be killed, this can be passed on to other bacteria. So this bacteria would now be resistant. This means it wouldn't be killed by the antibiotics. Some bacteria also have flagella. The singular of flagella is flagellum. These are hair-like extensions from the cell. So these are some flagella. Flagella are extremely useful to bacteria as they use for movement in liquids through rotation. This allows them to move away from toxic or harmful substances and towards substances such as food. Bacteria also have a cell wall made up of a substance called peptidoglycan. Like plant cell, the cell wall holds the cell together and protects it. So this is what peptidoglycan in the cell wall looks like. There are many different types of bacteria. Some of them can be useful, such as the ones found in your gut that help you digest food, whereas other ones can be harmful. So for example, Escherichia coli or E. coli is bacteria that causes food poisoning, whereas Streptococcus bacteria causes sore throats. However, you can treat these bacterial infections using antibiotics. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.